I'm in love with Costa Rica right now. Like, just beyond my highest expectations. Wow. <sighs> this is gorgeous. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't expect them to move that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> like, ah! Yeah. head in shore today. Um, we got a little sniff of this amazing area yesterday, but today we're gonna actually do a hiking trail. What we just learned about this region is that it's extremely biologically diverse. I think Costa Rica in general is one of the most, if not the most biologically diverse place in the world, but it's also hard to get to um, by car because there's not really any bridges and stuff. How many four by fours and stuff they said really? Yeah, so we're really hoping to see some cool stuff in last night or last evening with the river explorer. We saw those, I didn't get it on film, but we saw monkeys um, way up in the trees. So yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna go pick up Max from Elixir and he's gonna come with us for this hike. Um, so the reason I'm in my bathing suit is because there's really nowhere to land a dinghy here. Um, there's one spot, but you can only get into it at high tide and it's dead low tide and the tide shifts by nine feet. So we can't do that. So we're gonna do the beach landing. We might try to get the, the dinghy up on the beach if um, we're gonna pick up Max and see how he feels. But if not, we're gonna swim. So it's so humid here. You're always hot anyway. You just have to plan to be like dirty and hot and uncomfortable whenever you're doing anything like in Costa Rica. Um, so yeah, that's just that. <laughs> and so far it is another beautiful day. Um, I do see like a heavy cloud line behind me, but sometimes they just roll in and out. So you just don't know. Um, and the weather prediction here is just not good. So we don't even bother checking. <laughs> We don't do a lot of serious research on our destinations and focus rather on weather and route planning. We rely on word of mouth and recommendations from other cruisers more than anything we read. We'd heard this was a beautiful spot, but otherwise haven't prepared for Baja Drake where we are now and have no expectations in particular. Right away though, both of us know something uniquely special is happening here. We've seen a lot of beaches and many exotic and beautiful places, but from the first moments, the Osa Peninsula is demanding our full attention. Hi! To say that I'm excited for this hike is a huge understatement. <laughs> run, 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 run! Oh, Bill's coming! 
We started at the beach that runs along what you could call the main town here, with a small population of only 1,200. Said hi to our friends and set off on the path that leads to the beginning of the hiking trail. The Drake Bay Trail is a 12-mile coastal route that is broken only by beaches, a couple of small rivers and streams, and is completely free of any roads or cars. The trail runs along the coast of the Osa Peninsula and borders giant Corcovado National Park. This is cool. This is so cool. I know I'm going to be the back of the pack this whole day. <laughs> Trying to film everything because it's just amazing. Hey, did you guys hear that? It's a McCall. I knew I heard something. Wow. You see it? <laughs> so there's the first one. The second one is. That's the size of the bird for reference. And under a calabash. Oh, it might it might not be actually. A cala what? Calabash. <laughs> it's like a big nut. Oh. They're in Grenada, weren't they? <laughs> Comment if you know what this fruit is. Or not. I've never been back like that. Huge bamboo. I got told by someone that this is the top 0.2% of most biodiverse regions in the whole world. This, the Osa Peninsula, this part of Costa Rica. And mm -hmm. there's something like, uh, I can't remember the exact amount, but I feel like it's like two or 300 endemic species. You know, like things that just live. Just here. You can only, fi only find them in this peninsula. We've yeah. already seen that lizard thing, like, I have no idea what that is. That's a weird lizard. Max is 100% correct, covering an area of just 700 square miles on the southern Pacific coast of Costa Rica. The peninsula is estimated to house 2.5% of the biodiversity of the entire world while covering less than a thousandth of a percent of its total surface area, making it, by definition, the most biologically intense place on Earth. Once an island floating in the Pacific, the Osa Peninsula evolved in isolation until it merged with mainland Costa Rica over two million years ago, becoming a tropical landscape of unprecedented richness. So, the uh, river that we explored by dinghy Yesterday evening, we're gonna cross over right now. Okay, it's super shallow in here now. We haven't even reached the trailhead yet, and our senses have already been bombarded with hundreds of new sights and sounds as we absorb the endless flora and fauna surrounding us. So up here, we actually have an even better view of the entrance to this river. It just looks really shallow. I don't really see rocks, do you guys? This river, called Rio Agujitas, is the same one we dinghied up last night at twilight with our friends. It runs inland for over four miles, perpendicular to the coastline and trail we'll be hiking today. And we have to cross over it now by bridge to reach the trailhead. You're looking at the rocks we over yesterday? Oh my God, are it you kidding? <laughs> So <laughs> yesterday when we were going up this river, that is what we went around. Which way did we go? It was totally different. Oh my God. Huh. I knew it was uncomfortable for some reason. Wow. I'm so happy here. <laughs> on the trail and begin winding our way along the coast, headed south.
I didn't actually move that quickly. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> One well camouflaged crab. stop filming this hermit crab that has an entire butterfly in its claw. Like, it's crazy. It's just gonna drag it to who knows where. This is gorgeous. Oh my god. It's a little overexposed, but oh my god. I'm just, wow. That's pretty big. I think we messed up your day. This thing is a female golden silk orb weaver spider. This trail is more beautiful than the last corner, and every turn we make is different looking. Uh, we keep the trail keeps winding out here towards the beach, um, and then kind of inland. And it's, I mean, I can't get over this path like being so perfectly maintained through this dense jungle. I just, I'm in love with Costa Rica right now, like just beyond my highest expectations. This is the blue-crowned motmot, named the bird of Costa Rica. These colorful birds have long, thin tails that end with two round feathers known as racket-tipped tails. It is common for motmots to swing their tail plumage in a pendulum motion, earning them the nickname clockbirds. Today we've seen white-faced capuchin monkeys, scarlet macaws, like the ones we saw on Golfito, and hundreds of other birds, reptiles, insects, plants, trees, and flowers along this hike. It's hard to believe this is a public trail and not a national park. Costa Rica is passionate about protecting its priceless piece of mother nature, and it shows. No, no, okay. We stopped to get some food, drinks, this little bar in town. That was an amazing hike. That's a pretty nice view. Are they laughing at you? I don't know. <laughs> I heard vamos or even. <laughs> Wago. Is it Hugo or Wago? Wago. Hugo. 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 Really? <laughs> and I got, that's what Max says. 
I got Maracuya, which is passion fruit, and it's really good. So it's delicious. <laughs> I would recommend. <laughs> I highly recommend if you're Hugo. on the Oslo Peninsula. so seasick right now. <laughs> Something happened. Uh, Bill doesn't even know what, but the bottom line is that we're, the waves are kind of like beam on. I'm trying to edit and I can't do it anymore. So um, we're going to try moving closer to Max. He's like at the other side of the bay. We're the only two sailboats. Yeah, we're, yeah, the only one left. we're the only two sailboats here now. We just wanted to film it because it's one of the challenges of cruising in Costa Rica. Uh, on the west coast, there's just not a ton of great anchorages. Moving anchor spots is definitely the first step. What are you looking at? Shark potters on turn on. Oh, Top really one. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have picked up the camera to film. Yeah. It's, when, <laughs> it's when things really start going wrong. Wait, are uh, they all and in, it's also like... Are they all in really dark? Because I guess we came in in the dark. Oh. It's hard to like see though. Yeah, so the screens are like pitch black. I guess maybe get behind that point a little bit, a lot for protection. There must be some current pushing us too, because we're not into the wind. Okay, let's do this thing. Yeah. Editing does not help either. I think we're in now. Grabbed. We're anchoring quite a lot of chain because the tides here are 10 feet. So even though we dropped in, I don't know, it was like 50 feet of water, we had this really 25 feet of water. So we were picking up all that 100 feet of chain. Yeah. Yeah, the tides are almost 10 feet and, it, yeah. and it's basically low. Yeah, we're, we're one foot off the low water now. Low tide, yeah, one foot off. Um, so you want to set the anchor? I think the anchor alarm, yep. Okay. So, last thing we're gonna do here is set our anchor alarm. We're bearing 175. The bearing 175. And it's 90 now feet. 85 feet away. 85? Yeah. Okay. So now we have our anchor alarm set. We always keep this on at anchor. Um, there's a track in case we're dragging. It's just, even though there's no wind or anything here, it's just always good practice to know where your anchor is and um, if you're moving. So we keep it on and wake us up at night if we drag. I think it's called anchor. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah. 